Hi, I'm Di with Sister Chicks Quilting and welcome to my channel today. And I want to thank everybody for the wonderful comments on my last week's video from my quilt retreat. We had so much fun and we just really take that as a chance. We let our hair down and we quilt the heck out of fabric when we go. And it was fun to share it with you. I know so many of you really enjoyed it. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room or this amazing quilt that's behind me. For your information, this da, 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 is the very second quilt I ever made. And isn't it amazing that I, this is what I thought when I saw this quilt. I thought, oh my gosh, how do you sew around all of these pieces? <laughs> well, you know, quilters sew straight lines. This was made from a charm pack of batiks and it was called pomegranate. I don't remember who made it exactly, but I do love it and I love the colors on it. Well, let's see. I bought it right after I started quilting. Had no idea what I was going to do this charm pack. Did I say charm pack? It was made from a layer cake or 10 inch squares. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, the one of the very first, first things I ever bought when I started quilting was instructions. And I love a sale. I found this book called Rotary Cutting Revolution. It's by Anita Grossman Solomon. And I flipped through it at the store and thought, there's some amazing quilts in there. So I went ahead and purchased it. And I've not been sorry. I have made this quilt 12 times. And I've even taught it. A fabric store, a local fabric store, had a whole bunch of 10 inch layer cakes and they wanted to sell them. So I whooped one of these quilts up and I went and taught the class and guess what? They sold them all. Anyway, let me tell you about it. It's not the twister. I know you're thinking, oh, that's the twister ruler. Well, twist this baby. It's not the twister. <laughs> it's called the no waste windmill block. And I loved that she called it no waste. You know why? There's hardly any waste. Now her measurements in her book are for a different size but I had a 10 inch layer cake and I wanted to use that. And this is what I ended up with. I'm not gonna show you my quilting job cause it's not the greatest, but here's something fun. Look at this really wide binding I put on it. I was at a fabric store and I thought the, this would be great because with this quilt, you have to put a border on it. Can you see the green border? I wanted to put this on for the border but there wasn't enough fabric. So I thought, well, I'll just put it on the binding. And it was so cute. I loved it so much that I actually made, this is like one and a half inches because I wanted to show this fabric off. So that's my story about the quilt. Now let's get started on making it because today we're gonna put it together. Let me show you my version of how to make this quilt. Now in the book, you're going to get this template and squaring up guide. That's the key. You can see the lines for the block, for the shape. This is the basic shape that you're gonna cut out for the, some people call this a tessellating star by the way. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. This is how I do it. So I use these wonderful rotating mats. They are my fave. And what I do using a pin, I put this right in the center of my rotating mat. And this is because I'm using a 10 inch square. Then I get out my trusty ruler after I tape it on and I line up my ruler just like this. And I put a piece of tape, I actually bring it down like so and I put a piece of tape all the way up. And when it's on, I trim it to the 10 inch line because this is gonna be a 10 inch block. Now, by the way, the tape that I use is called washi tape 
and the washi tape is paper tape that doesn't leave any residue. It's wonderful. I use it a lot in my quilting. And I do this all the way around with putting these pieces of tape right on my ruler, now right on my mat. See the little arrow? See the little arrow? What do you think that little arrow means? That is the side I cut on so I don't make any mistakes. Then I remove this and the last thing I do is I tape off a corner. And the reason I tape off a corner is to easy place my 10 inch square. I have my template for my 10 inch square. Then I take my 10 inch square of fabric using this little corner piece. I make sure my square is on the mat. You guys know the next step. I take a ruler and I put my ruler so the outside edge is on the outside edge of the tape mark marker. Here, let's pull it back so you can see. And whack. Now this is why I love these mats because I just twist it like so and I put lay down my ruler again check what out check it out there's two pieces there's two more pieces there's a total of four pieces here so I've essentially cut out two squares it's that easy if you set up your mat this way now you don't have to do it on a rotating mat. You could do it on a larger mat and just, you know, figure it out. But this works for me and I really, really like it. Look what I have here. I have 80 squares all cut out. Now, as you notice, there is a border. Remember when I said the green border? Well, this is the border piece. Let me show you. You only cut one side of the border. So you cut the border once like this, and you're going to end up with pieces like this. Got it? So simple. There's a couple of corner pieces that you need to cut. I'm gonna cut them right now because they're the same as they're the same as the blocks. Okay. So here are my corner pieces. Let's get to the quilt wall and lay this puppy out. Okay. Now that everything is cut out, I have my stack of blocks and my stack of borders. I'm gonna start laying it out. And this is, this is definitely a layout quilt. So I'm gonna start with one and you put it up like this. Let's see, I'm gonna start over here. And you guys will see more of my backside than I want you to, but just don't tell anybody you've seen it. Anyway. See what I'm doing? I'm rotating this around so it makes a little pinwheel. What do you think so far? You can't see much, but stick with me and I'm gonna lay it out and I'm gonna show you some borders. this you're going to get the idea of how to lay out this quilt right it is all layout 
So you're going to want to use a design wall or a design bed or a design floor if you can still get down on your knees. I want to give you a hint when you're cutting out the borders because they're very directional. They only go one way and I made a mistake. So this is a border and, and there's two sides, wrong sides together. Don't we always, you know, on the fold cut fabric out like that? Make sure that you cut them out so all the fabric is facing the same way. Because guess what? Half of my borders don't work. Luckily, I have plenty of fabric to make more borders for this quilt. So this is the layout, but let me show you how I take them off the wall to sew them. So this is a row up here and this is a row. Let's take a look at this one right here because it's easy to see. There's a light blue, a dark blue, an aqua, and a coral. So this is actually a square. And what I do is I take all of the top squares off like so, put the right sides together, and then I go to my machine and sew them. So this is that block that I sewed the two pieces together. And I'm gonna show you where it fits in. It fits in right here and right here. And I have pressed these seams opposite one another so they will easily nest and I can flip it over and sew the block. Another hint when I'm sewing these blocks together is I always sew, I always make sure my center seams are lined up, not the outside edges, but the center seams because we're gonna square these blocks up. So when you have the block sewn together, it's gonna be pretty wild. There's, it, it's not square. But again, I use my same template to line up these lines and these lines. So I put it down there and I want to make this a nine and a half inch block raw so it finishes a nine inch block. And that's what I do this with. I just use my ruler, twist my mat and square it up. Take it so it's nine and a half inches. And my block will be perfect. If you're gonna make this quilt, I really recommend making the smaller size first because the blocks can be not really fussy, but there's a lot of steps to them. So here is my perfectly squared up nine and a half inch block to finish at nine inches. And I'm gonna go put it on my design wall and make the billion rest of them. <laughs> okay, there's only 80. So here's my nine and a half inch square and it's ready to go. I think Patricia or Blue Block is going to love this quilt because it's her fabric. I didn't have any 10 inch squares and I'm making it for her. But I want to give you a real graphic description of why it's called a no waste windmill. Because there's no waste. This is the trimmings from it. That's it guys. Pretty cool, huh? I started out with 10 inch squares I ended up with a nine and a half inch block. Now I'm going to show you two more quilts that I've made with this very block. You saw the one at the first. I hang this every Valentine's Day. I really enjoy it. And I made the blocks a lot smaller, as you can see. I did make this one with batiks as well. Did I tell you guys I'm a batik freak? The first few years I quilted, everything was batiks. And this is, look at this one. This one is called Island Punch. It is 10 blocks wide. 
oh, I'm sorry, eight blocks wide and 10 blocks long. And you know what? Look at me. I'm just totally snuggled in it. I adore this quilt. It's so much fun with all the bright tropical colors, colors of the ocean and the reef and everything. And I quilted it. There's my quilting pattern. Kind of I wanted waves and I think that's a great pattern. While I'm talking about quilting real quick, I do long arm quilt for people. I've had a lot of people ask in my comments. I would love to quilt for you. Just contact me through my website and all the information you need is there. So I'd love to quit your quilts. I have a really fast turnaround. Right now I'm turning quilts around in two weeks because I'm that fast. Oh, and Hazel's mom's helps me. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to put the information for Anita Grossman Solomon's book in the comments below so you can find it. Also, if you like my videos, I would love a thumbs up as well as a subscribe. And you can do that in all those things down there. Next week, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but it's going to be fun. So tune in. The chick and I will be back to quilt with you. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.